Welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of January 7th. Um, today, we are going to review some draft language of proposed bylaw changes um, before it's, those are sent on to the Planning Board for the next step before going to town meeting. And, um, and oh, that's both number one and two on the agenda this is, uh, is draft language. And then I thought we could, because of the, the discussion that came up last time around kind of the definitions of the districts and, and how different people are interpreting them and so on, and that we don't have a clear definition, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, and then review the committee work program for the, for the upcoming few months um, and approve our minutes and discuss our meeting schedule, make sure that we're on track for that. Um, John Coutinho is going to be a little bit late he has another meeting, but I think he'll be here by 7.15. Yes? Could I uh, insert something into the agenda at the outset? Yes. If I could. Yes, you may. <clears throat> I'm Tom Garabedian, here in my capacity as a member of Davenport Village. Okay. And I'm requesting on behalf of uh, a number of condominium associations in town that the Zoning Advisory Committee consider um, repealing the amendments that were made to Article 13 and Article 13A three years ago as it relates to rubbish disposal. Mm -hmm. uh, as it stands, that uh, amendment to the zoning bylaw uh, forced the, the various condominium garden apartments and uh, village housing and residential districts to be responsible for their own rubbish collection and recycling. And uh, as a matter of equity and fairness, uh, we don't really understand why those services are being denied to members members uh, of the town who happen to live in uh, own live and own uh, condominium units. So I'm I'm asking that the zoning advisory committee you know consider this as a as a potential change for town meet the upcoming town meeting. Okay, so we'll definitely discuss this as part of our work plan going forward. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Um, is there uh, any other? No, that, that was it. At what point do you end up uh, forwarding your recommendations to the planning board? Well, we are forwarding a certain number of ones that we've already discussed to the planning board now or after this meeting. Um, and we're hoping to do another chunk of them within the next, I'd say, two weeks or so. Sometime in January. Yeah, sometime in January so that they can still be considered for this this year's town meeting. Okay. And the, the warrant closes at what point? Okay, so so we'll we'll have to discuss them quickly in the next few weeks to to get uh, get them to planning board in time. Okay. Can I get clarification on his request? Yes, please. Um, is this because you're being you have to go into a common area maintenance type of charge? Yes, we we have to pay. Uh, we have to engage and pay directly. Uh, RV or and you know anyone else who provides the service right, so it's a duplicate because your taxes are paying for that for everyone else yeah, I mean it's my um, I think it's both perception and reality that the taxes that we pay don't you know make any provision for a reduction simply because uh, certain services rubbish disposal and also snow plowing are, are not provided by the town this specific request is just for the rubbish disposal aspect of the, of the current zoning bylaw. Okay. okay. Any other clarification questions? No, thank you. I'm, I'm not sure if mine's clarification. Is Davenport Road a private road or is it, a, is it an accepted road? At this point, it's a private road. I'm not sure about the other, um, well, the others like the preserve and whatnot, uh, stagecoach and so on, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions for the town? Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Um, is there a procedure for private roads? Can you come up? Can you, yeah, come up. Can you come up? Sorry. Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. Um, is, is there a procedure for roads to petition the town to go through a process to become an accepted road. I know 
other places I've lived um, or had homes, um, you had to do that. Um, if your road was not accepted, you had to petition the town and then go through a process and um, usually get assessed a betterment because if your road didn't have the proper, you know, standards of the town or something. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, so Elaine, is there a, can you answer that? There is a general bylaw that sets out the process. So there is a bylaw that is set out. To petition the town. Mm -hmm. So the, just passing it at town meeting, I guess, instead of. process for getting there, but is in that bylaw. Versus just saying that we're a private road and we want the services of a public road. So there's a versus becoming that, a public road. There's a bylaw that lays out the process for getting a public a private way accepted. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great. So um, we'd like to start with the. <coughs> Wording changes. We'll start with the uh, solar farm screening. And Elaine has prepared. Uh, I wanted to say a, a little just goodbye and thank you to Georgia since she has left us uh, to pursue her master's degree full time. Um, but uh, and and an acknowledgement that Elaine is going to be doing double duty for uh, a while until Georgia's replaced. So thank you. <laughs> um, so solar farm. Um, in the bylaw, Article 31, it takes me a while to translate from Roman numerals, um, <laughs> for commercial solar voltaic installations. And um, item E, we just added the phrase forming an effective year-round screen. So the entire sentence reads, Whenever reasonable, structures shall be shielded from view by vegetation, forming an effective year-round screen, and or joined and clustered to avoid adverse visual impacts. So, um, does everyone agree with that wording as far as going forward to planning board? Yes? Okay, good. One down. Um, yeah? Maybe not one down. Um, okay. So. I was I was I was not here the day we discussed it. All right. Um, I don't have any huge objections, just yeah. observations. Um, I think shielded from view is potentially problematic in that whose view? If there's a solar farm on a hillside across town that we can see, it's almost impossible to shield that from view. And it says whenever reasonable. Right, yeah. but, but, and that's always going to be nuji one way or the oh, other. Yeah. The, the solar farm developer will think it's nuji one way, and the neighbors will think it's nuji the other way. Uh, I wonder if there is, if that's unfixable, or if there's other language to make it clear at least, are we talking about the immediate neighbors? Are we talking about the neighborhood, shielded from view of the neighborhood? I, I don't know if there's language that can make that more is shielded from view from the person standing right next to the fence that's six feet tall and you're five feet. Um, I wonder if that language might make it so this is a toothless change. It might. That's true. Um, I think that... I like the intent a I lot. I think that some of the things that were raised on that day that we were discussing it is that there's a lot of regulations that the state has about not um, imposing too much of a burden uh, or, or restriction on solar installations. Um, and so this was, in, in a way, considered a possible, um, a possible ad that wouldn't get struck down at the state level. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I mean, I certainly think that you know, if it's if it's visible from a second story of a house nearby, that would be you know still something that needs to be mitigated. For instance, <laughs> um, uh, but I think it's going to vary so much depending on the location and the topography. So I don't know that we can get super specific. That's again my opinion. But, but, and I don't have an answer. I was yeah. hoping that someone might have a thought. Any other ideas? 
I, yeah. I think it ties into Mary. One of the things on the agenda is definitions. Yeah. Because there's there's a lot of use of the word neighborhood. Well, there is no definition to what a neighborhood is. Right. So as as you begin to put phrases in there without definitions, I don't know that that helps a lot. So I, I think. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, so I mean, is this addition forming an effective year-round screen? Is that using terms that you feel need to be better defined? No, no. Okay. I, I, I think that I think the language here is is, is as good as we're going to get, mm -hmm. and it can be enhanced down the road by clarifying some definitions of, of some of the verbiage throughout this zoning regulations. Okay. Any other ideas? Yeah, and I don't have an answer. My worry isn't the year round. My worry is the shielded from view and how we're defining view. And, and we're not, is the answer. And I don't have a suggestion. I right. don't know if that was part of our discussion two, three weeks ago, whenever it was. But That, that part was there before. Right. Yeah. It's just the, the red stuff that's been added. No, right. I understand that. I, I don't know if that part was kicked around or not or if it was... I think it's like any any site plan review. It's very subjective to the parcel and and how close it is to what you're abutting, and whether or not you are on a hillside for the world to see. Um, I think this is probably as good as you can get language-wise. That allows you the latitude to do what is best for any given situation. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to undergo site plan review either way. Um, we're just giving some additional language that then the boards responsible for reviewing the site uh, plans can, you know, utilize that to negotiate. <laughs> so I read this as just the commercial solar photo photonic installation. Yes. So someone did this in their backyard privately. It doesn't apply. This whole article doesn't apply. Right. That's, I just want to... No, no, I understand. Yeah, it, you know, I, I think of the um, the solar farm that went in behind um, down there off Chamberlain. I can't remember the name of the road. And I know it's not technically their backyard. It's somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. But it's effectively changed completely what they see out their back window. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. I, I'm aware it's not someone's backyard and two panels. I, I get that idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably be less concerned if it were that. I am thinking of the big arrays and what do we mean by shielded. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't have an answer and I don't okay. want to slow us down. Okay. Um, Thanks. Okay. So we're ready to send this forward to planning board? Yes? I, I don't think we have to vote on that. No, no right? we already no, voted. Just, yeah. Okay, good. All right. The next. Chair? Yes. May I? Um, so I wanted that to end. And then I want to throw out a possibility for the future on okay. solar farms. Okay. okay. I don't know the laws around all of this, and I know I'm a, a, I'm a guy that drives the most efficient hybrid offered. I carry <laughs> water bottles around. I carry refillable mugs. I care about the environment dearly. I also care about neighborhood character. And so we took up the solar farm and zoning, and so I was there when we talked about all of that, and I get the regulations. So tonight, uh, and admittedly, it was 45 minutes of work, not four days or four months of work. Wellesley and Weston seem to have designated solar farm overlays. And they seem to have said, these are the places we encourage solar farms, is the wording, at least for Wellesley. In, in the hopes of encouraging solar farms, here are places we've designated. Wellesley designated inside the jug handle of the new um, interchange, Route 9, 128, which I think is a fantastic place oh, yeah. for solar farms. Yeah. Um, I couldn't find Weston's, their, their zoning map I found online was from 2007, and, and the rule was 2011, so I have no idea where they designated their overlay. But I wonder if there's something there in the future that could be a route to pursue to try to have some control and encourage uh, renewable energy sources, but not have it be stuff that are potentially neighborhood destroying aesthetically. Um, and I wonder if there's a possibility there. I also wonder out loud, um, who owns the land 
inside the jug handles of interchanges. State. Is that Hopkinton? State. Is that DOT. state? Does Hopkinton have a zoning authority over that jug handle? No. Does Wellesley have zoning authority over Route 9128? It depends on who owns it. Yeah. Okay. Because that was a thought. We have a huge amount of space between the north and southbound lanes. That is not wetlands. That could be a huge, perfect place for solar panels. But if it's not ours to control, that's a dead end pretty quickly. But anyway, the overlay thought might be something perhaps that will make the state happy and work with preserving the community. That's but based on their language, this is just speculation on my part, but based on their language and you're saying it's encouraged yeah. um, that they can't necessarily um, disallow it in the non-overlay areas. That, right? And I was looking in other places to see what was allowed by right and by permit, et cetera. And I didn't see solar in any of the other places. Granted, it was 45 minutes of work. Yeah. But uh, I just, in the future, it might be another path to consider. Yeah. To try to control solar development. Okay. Did you want to take? <clears throat> well, okay. Uh, so, so you know, when we originally drafted this, some of this language, and it took, it, as I said, it took us two years to do it, because the first time people. Um, at town meeting thought that when we were, the regulations that we were putting in or the conditions that we were putting in were trying to encourage. Now, I have to be careful saying encourage because I, too, want to minimize my carbon footprint, my family's carbon footprint. But one of the things that we, that, that we um, went up against is trying to put too many conditions on. You, you, as you know, we can get uh, uh, tapped for that. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we do, I know at the time I thought that we went right to the edge of, of what we could do to try and, um, I don't, I'm, I'm going to use the word control, but uh, I probably shouldn't be allowed to, I'm probably not allowed to say that word, but to at least uh, encourage or discourage from, uh, or, or, or try to have them be as good a neighbor as possible, force them to be as good a neighbor as possible. So you think that where we are? Well, is, well, well what I'm saying is, you know, if, if the, I don't know if we're allowed to um, say this is the only place that you can put it because, as it was, they could go anywhere, and we were trying to at least pull it back, and and we we gave um, uh, specific sizes of some of the some of the, the the minimum size that they could use. What do we do? Three acres or five acres? And then you know, and, and the screening, and, and and the fencing, and you know, as much stuff as as we thought that we could get away with from the state. But the state is encouraging it. That's the difference. Is that we're against, we're going up against a state that is encouraging as much uh, renewable energy as possible. Mm -hmm. Which you know, which is a good thing. But yeah, more than reason. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Come on up. Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. So um, the question I have is, is, is you have language in here to, to wall off the solar insulation so people can't see it. What, what about the case, kind of the inverse case, where the, possibly the, the clear cutting of the land in order to install the solar fence exposes a neighborhood to something larger, say the highway or an overpass or um, an industrial facility uh, power plant or something. So um, the, while the, the, this regulation will shield you so you can't see the, the solar panels, you're going to actually probably see something worse, right? So is there any... Um, I, I know there's probably no solution, but has there been has that come up? Because that's that's like the other side of the coin, where you know maybe your neighborhood is next to E.L. Harvey or some I don't know, just just some some installation that's a different character than the neighborhood. So if if that land is is targeted for solar and they cut down all the trees, then. You know, even if they cut down something so now that your view is not of the trees, your view is maybe of 135 or 85 or 
Four ninety five. So it didn't anything. It didn't come up in this particular discussion of the solar farm screening, um, but I do know just from from being on planning board and things like that that um, that there's a lot of attention paid to keeping screening and natural um, the natural screening as much as possible, not clear cutting whenever it can be controlled um you know based on based on our bylaws um so but but not you know that nothing in relation to this had you know was addressing right because i don't i don't see anything here about buffer zones or anything like that so if there actually there actually is about buffer zones and maintaining in many of our bylaws there's um talking about the buffer zone and maintaining the original landscaping or lands i can't remember the exact wording of it but it basically means not cutting what's there um, so it's not about clear cutting everything and then then counting off your 20 feet in a buffer and then maybe putting a few trees in there it's saying keep the buffer so so we do we do have that, that in there? a lot of the bylaws I don't know H. 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 yeah yeah so H. I thought I read something it also is, uh, under use regulations It just says minimum necessary for construction. And there's also a separate zoning bylaw. It's called buffers around non-residential uses in residential districts. It's section 210.121.1. And depending on what the zoning district is, there's an additional right. buffer required. Also, that's in a that's not in here. That's not in that handout. Put it there. Uh, it's in the bylaw. All right. I'll look at it. Okay. Anything else on the commercial solar voltaic? change in wording that we're proposing okay moving on to the industrial a b and professional office districts um, starting just at the top industrial a and it's on the last page that we <coughs> voted to add to uses permitted by right and this is where you know if we want to talk about any um, specific restrictions on these particular uses this is where we should do that okay educational and vocational schools indoor recreation uses and retail uses which are accessory to a manufacturing use located within the industrial a district and the area of such retail use shall not exceed 5,000 square feet so that's the only one with specific restrictions um, currently so educational vocational schools can I just double check real quick what if any restrictions are not allowed for us to be put in you putting uh, based on state regulation so I'd have to go back a few meetings but it was uh, <laughs> dimensional requirements height bulk those kinds of things and the use okay Okay, so they can be, those That's can the be? The statute specifically calls out that cannot be regulated. Okay. I think so. I have to go back. Hours of operation? Cannot. Cannot be restricted. Okay. Um, okay, so we might not be able to restrict that one specifically, and, and we might not even really need to add it to the, to the list because it's going to be allowed by state regulation anyhow. <laughs> but, but in order to encourage people to possibly put educational uses in our empty spaces mm -hmm. <laughs> that you know that's the reason to have it there so any comments yeah yeah if we're trying to encourage stuff we we, we try to limit as many regulations as possible mm -hmm. that's the way I see it because mm -hmm. as, as we as zoning goes you try to encourage or discourage that's what zoning is. That's, that, that's how actually how Elaine explained it to me many years ago. You're trying to encourage something or discourage something. So when you put uh, restrictions on things, it generally means you're trying to discourage. And um, especially yep. educational facilities. So Elaine, I think you said the bulk or size of the building can be um, regulated. Have to go back and, and get that statute out. So size and then the number of people. Don't, you can't regulate the number of people but but state law would require that you can't put you know 1500 people in a 10 by 10 
there's other codes having yeah to right so right so mm -hmm. so those would come into play if the planning board couldn't do something to direct the applicant in other words they would use those state state regulations but everything's subject to discussion too I mm -hmm. mean, Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it may not be able to require limits, but they can certainly address concerns that the town might have. Right. So when I deal with schools and churches in my business, um, they like to see something that allows them to go in so they don't have to choose the Dover Amendment. But they also like to know what the town guidelines are that they prefer to see. Is there anything we can offer them I'm as a guideline? Sure what it would have to be geared toward what the town wants. So you'd have right. to define what the town is looking for and then put something there. But if nothing is there, it's subject to all the other requirements in the zoning bylaw. It's not exempt necessarily from everything in there. And any time a school has been built here, they understand what the requirements are and they build to those as much as possible. Right, so they are, they are taking the town's guidelines basically mm -hmm. not just automatically threatening a Dover amendment no right mm -hmm. right and oftentimes if you get a school or a church that follows those guidelines of the town the Dover amendment process never comes up no but if you try to put things in there that the state law doesn't allow the Attorney General will kick it out right yeah. right so when you said earlier that you have the ability to uh, give guidelines on the bulk of the building, but not the hours. What are the other? What are the other? If you give me a minute, I can. Yep. Yep. Sure. Yep, yep. No problem. But we used the 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 Dover Amendment was used even in building of the Marathon School. I know, but to that's, go to go around town that, regulations, though. That was just that. That's that, that's you know the town the town within the town. We still yep. you know the, the the you know to even build something for ourselves. We 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 were may have been over restrictive you know so that's something we have to think about also one example hmm? one example <laughs> but, oh, but, but that's the most that's the latest but that's, example. A, that's the newest example just because it needed to be done because it had been out there for so long not not fixing the school okay I have that so um, educational uh, may be subject to reasonable regulations concerning the bulk and height of structures and determining yard sizes, lot area setbacks, open space parking, and building coverage requirements. That's it. And we have a bylaw that addresses parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a bylaw, of course, that addresses height in various zones. Height, lot area setbacks, parking, building, lot coverage. So. We've addressed most of those. Are there any other specific items that anyone feels we should have on you? Nope. Okay, let's send that forward to planning board then. For indoor recreation uses, are there any specific restrictions that you would want added to this specific bylaw? Go ahead. My, my personal opinion is there are so many restrictions I'd like added to that one that I don't think you can add it. Okay. I so maybe we should just should let let permit. people vote on it. <laughs> Could yep. someone tell me what that means? What is an indoor recreational use? It's defined in the bylaw now. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's in section 210. Okay. Otherwise, I can read it. Yeah, please. If you can grab it quickly. I would love that. Thank you. Sorry for the hassle. Sorry, right. we read it last time too. I was. I missed <laughs> the name. I know you weren't there. So. <laughs> you um, mean, what's the number? 210-4, and all the definitions are alphabetical. So oh, under that's indoor yeah. recreation, a different part of the Bible. So. It says, um, a facility within a permanent building or structure designed and equipped for the conduct of sports, athletic, and other leisure time activities, provided that all activities are conducted entirely within the building and no noise generated within the facility may be heard at the property line. Such activities may include swimming, skating, indoor skydiving, soccer, bowling, and other similar uses, but shall not include arcades and billiard halls unless accessory to another indoor recreation use. This was from 2015. Okay. 
So arcade, and what was the other thing that was not allowed? Billiard Indoor billiards. Billiard. 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 A smile that brings up the music <laughs> band, doesn't it? I know, I know, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> billiard, you arcade, because billiards are so... Um, I would echo Carol. I would much prefer that to be under special play. Yes. Point of clarification. Is, is the purpose here to revisit votes that we've already taken, or is it just to look at the language that was approved at a previous meeting and see if the language that's here accurately reflects what we've already discussed and voted on? Yes. I would say the latter is true. Um, these were these were discussed, these were approved to go forward to planning board, and it's it's just a matter of do we like the wording as is? Clearly Carol and Ted don't like the wording because they don't like the entire addition or possibility. Um, but but you're not proposing any changes to the wording because you're not proposing, you know, that's what I'm hearing. Correct. So, okay. so the wording as it is is I believe what you guys voted on. No. Okay. So it'll you'll go to town meeting and you know it's it's quite quite possible it'll be voted down. Mm -hmm. As much as it could be voted up. Well, it goes so. to the planning board first. Right? Yes, absolutely. Board. Planning board first. Um, okay. So any any other possible changes to this wording before it goes forward to planning board? Okay. Size, hours of operation. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's just too many things because each one of these things is different. I mean, obviously, we move arcade, that's one thing, but uh, shooting range hmm, could be another thing. Um, well, that's a whole, that's a whole, that's all, all different regulations anyway. Yeah. Indoor shooting range. That's what about axe throwing? Hmm? And we've, got, we've, got, we've, got, we've got four ranges. We've got four. In, we have ranges outdoor ranges, but we, we don't have an indoor shooting range, do we? We have four indoor shooting ranges. We have four in indoor shooting ranges. Well, maybe we might end up with a fifth one on South Street. We have four? Mm. I always thought there was one. One's, one's called Southboro, but it's you know, mostly in Hopkinton. Hopkinton, my club. Okay. Retail uses, which are accessory to a manufacturing use. Basically, we're just talking about a retail store attached to another business that exists in this district, not exceeding 5,000 square feet. Any other restrictions that you would want put on this particular item? Do we have an hours of operation? I mean, I noticed specific hours of operation for certain other items in some of these bylaws but oh yeah that was the retail stores 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, but is there any other overarching bon zoning bylaw no no nothing okay so I would propose that we say not not no later than 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Our hours of operation for the retail uses yeah for the retail use anyone That's the only other proposal that I would have. No? That seems late to me for what I envision that space to be. But I'm not, I think the business would regulate that more than, okay. more than we would. I mean, so, if yeah. it's, that's fine. Right. Yeah, right. Retail yeah. open after 9 o'clock in Hopkinton is I know, it would be like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's just like what we did with, so with the uh, liquor licenses in town. We, <laughs> Try to make them all uniform and allow everybody to stay open till one o'clock in the morning if they wanted to, and uh, nothing changed. Well, what what other do we have retail hours in the rest of town? Nowhere. Well, everything. Occasional, occasional hours and price to offer. Occasional bylaws here and there, but nothing overall for the town. And okay. occasional, you know, specific developments. For the, you know, what about planning? What purposes? about downtown retail? Does that have an hour? No, but there is there that is part of uh, an item on your work program yeah, for our a future discussions. So. Just to look at the you know, look at imposing those. So, okay, so we'll leave it off this. Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. As is goes to planning board. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then, uh, before we leave um, yes. Industrial A, at the last meeting, I think you voted to include car washes yes. as well. So this was done before that last oh, meeting. Okay. So if you wanted to add that as number 16. Yes. It would say car wash facilities, which is the same phrase we use in the downtown business district. I thought we did that, that as special permit. Oh, was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll put that in the other section then. And under special permit? Yes. Okay. As number eight. Car wash facilities. facilities. And do you have the minutes that, you know, stated the rest of that? There's also self-storage, too. The self-storage we voted down, down. Yeah. For, for a special permit? We no. voted it down. Oh. Voted. Not at all. We did. Um, so car wash facilities, I'm sorry, I was asking whether or not you had those those minutes for the exact wording, so we can you just say to allow car wash facilities. So that's the phrase that we use. In industrial. We wanted to say including including drive through or this automated self service and no, that's what you automated want. drive through. We want the automated yes. because they're the ones that only use six to eight gallons per car. Right. Okay. So it's only. The other, the so then, can we specify that in the definition? We can we can say something about the recycled water. We yeah. can say yeah. Mm -hmm. If we want to. Car wash facilities. Utilizing the latest techniques of uh, water reclamation. Using utilizing water reclamation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In just the past few years, they went from thirty gallons down to sixty. Up the it's just amazing what they do now. Square footage. That's it's over ninety percent of the water is reclaimed, oh, and reused. Okay. Do you have final wording then? So it'd be car wash facilities utilizing water reclamation. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. Isn't there something, something about the latest oh. use? I mean, water uh, reclamation today is probably they, they only sell they, they only sell they only sell those nowadays though. That's the no, whole all thing. I'm saying is water reclamation today. I don't know how it works at all. I don't understand the science, the mechanics, any of it. My bet is whatever they're doing today, which is better than 10 years ago, is not as good as what they will do 10 years from now. So I thought I heard a, the latest. Most, but it, I think the problem is when you reference something in the zoning bylaw, it can't be a future standard. It has to be a standard that you're referencing today. And it can't be subject to change without time meeting vote. So, so phrasing so like the latest, the latest doesn't work. Which is always changing yeah. without yeah. a town meeting vote. They, they frown upon that. Okay. Mm, town council will change that. <coughs> okay. I'm not, I might be reluctant to, to put that condition on. If it's a special permit, I think that would be reviewed during the permit process. It should be, but, Whereas but we can still encourage it within the zoning bylaw. That's, you know. My, my concern is that if you're using a standard, like, I don't know, five years from now, they might not use water at all for washing cars. <laughs> but we're saying you have to use water reclamation, so therefore, we can't have a waterless car wash, which I don't know whether that's even okay, that's possible. Point. But yeah, good point. You know what I'm saying? If you if you put it in there, then that's that becomes your standard rather than the permit process determining what the standard of the day is. Just and Elaine can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but that's the way I interpret it. Yes. So, but, but instead of maybe instead of saying water reclamation, maybe we say efficient use of resources. Whoever has the most efficient will be given more preference. So, yeah, or sustainable and efficient use of resources. Okay, good. that's a good. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Industrial B. Industrial B. So we have the same three additions to by right. Um, those are the educational use, vocational schools, indoor recreation uses, and the retail uses, not to exceed 5,000. So can I assume that the wording is fine for Industrial B as well? Yes. Yeah? Okay. All three of those? All right. And then we were crossing off the use by special permit in industrial B because we're basically moving it to by right. 
and that's I know I know not everyone agrees with that um, but uh, but that's the that's what we're proposing also under use by special permit um, item D restaurants that contain more than 100 seats and are not located in the hotel overlay district or are open for business after 11 p.m. So basically they're saying that, okay, so this is this goes in uh, hand in hand with the use by right, what is it, the A11, A11, yes. So saying that um, by right, we are saying the number, the restriction on number of seats shall not apply to restaurants located within the hotel overlay district portion of industrial B district. This is very confusing, but um, <laughs> but that's what we talked about and what we voted on. All right. Yeah. Um, so so. But the hour stays. I wasn't here for that, so I don't know if you changed the hours on it. The hours. The hours were. The hours stayed. The hours stayed. Yeah. Okay. We just we just changed the seating. Planning board can change it. If they want to. Industrial. Okay, so everyone agrees that that wording is. I mean, it is. It is accurate. It takes a little rereading to understand what it means, but it is accurate. There's no. So, so we didn't change. We didn't change the, the size of the. Um, so the thing is, is there's that in in B. Um, which. Just below, just below, just below, just reading. Okay. Just right below 11. Retail stores. No, we never did change that one. Um, because we only did the accessory use. We haven't discussed the other one yet, the other buy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we haven't discussed it. I thought okay. that was voted in the negative to change. Yeah, yeah but this I think there was a discussion there at the two meetings ago, yeah. which is here. Why wouldn't we? Which we did it in one. If right. we did it in one, why wouldn't we do both? Right. We didn't do it at all. I think. The so do definition of restaurant. I'm trying to find it on the work plan. Somewhere it, it says. It was December 10th. Because this is December 10th. Yeah. yeah. Industrial A, but it's also the increased the retail store. store. We, we discussed it, but it wasn't closed. We qualifier. didn't close that item. Remember? Or was that the one that you needed? I'll, I'll check the minute. We tabled it. Because oh, we were okay. talking, we, we did discuss it about changing the retail store from 2,000 to 5,000 max, but we didn't come to a conclusion and we didn't vote on it. So that's still on our work plan. Okay. Carol, did you have something that you were well, thinking about? I just had a clarification or I guess a question because I understood when we're talking about restaurants and the seating issue. Mm-hmm. It was with regards to Industrial A, South Street area. Okay. But, and then the Overly District. Where, where is the 100 seat limit that limits South Street? Because restaurants are uh, uh, by right. It doesn't have a limit. It's only in the Industrial B District that has a limit. There is no limit in Industrial A. Okay, I thought we were talking. That's that's where my confusion is because I thought we were talking about co and over there and the limits on the seats and I thought that was an issue. But there's no seating limit on sales for a restaurant. Evidently not. They just said restaurants. Okay. Just restaurants. Restaurants. Okay. Um, but on, in industrial B, there is there, there is, is a restriction, and so we were trying to make it a little more um, friendly. Yeah, more flexible with more but, seats, but but then a hundred seats. Our, de was our seats. determination was that only within the hotel overlay district because we didn't want anything closer to the residential areas. Right. Okay. Because the hotel overlay district is is a little bit closer to 495 and has a buffer to the residential areas. Okay. Okay. So that's Thank why you. we restricted it to that. Okay. So I'll that affects now. the number 11. Which I think the wording is fine on. Any comments on that? That's page three of the Industrial B District. It's A11, uses by right. It just says the um, restriction on number of seats doesn't apply in the Hotel Overlay District. 
And then under uses allowed by special permit, it's the item D. It's the counterpart to that one. Okay. Is restaurants contain one of the seats in or not? Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Any suggestions of changing to the wording? No? Okay. We'll send those forward. And I think that's it for industrial B right now. We might have more before the end of the month. <laughs> okay, and professional office district. On the first page of the handout, we have item F added, educational use in vocational schools. And that was it, right? Yes, that was it. It also changed the next letter to G yep. after that, since we added it as F. Yeah, why did we add it as F? I oh, because this, the last one is all accessory uses. So, so, yeah. so, yes, the last one was the accessory use. Okay. Any other comments on that wording? No? Okay. So all of those can be sent forward to the planning board. Um, I think, be, I don't know if the planning board is going to be able to discuss these before they get the rest of our possible wording changes, but better that we send it to them now just in case, you know, they have time on the agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I get one, one. Is there anything that we could say, you know, is, again, I'm going to bring this back up, you know, many of the things we're talking about are, uh, are discouraging. Is there any, any wording that we can put in to try and encourage an educational facility, maybe moving into the professional office park area, just in case there might be an empty building there or something? You know, because one of the things that, that you know, we were, uh, that, that's been talked about is we, we call that professional office park, which says you would know that in, in commercial real estate that there's, it's just, there's, there's no office, office space selling right now. Really. Well, okay, let's put it this way. Could you imagine somebody wanting to build an office park? Mm. in where we designated an office park. Well, there's, there's some medical office parks that are being built right now. And you just have to be able to attract those specific users. Right. So, so the, the, we're going to talk about this more like in the Franklin Road. Yeah, get, I know. To get to Franklin Road. Uh, or when other people, like when, when, when it was proposed that uh, you know, off Wilson Street, that was going to be another one. You know, it, it, I, I can't imagine people wanting to do, or, or any company wanting to build there. So that's what, so, so my point is, if one of the only things that we can possibly get there maybe is a school, is there something we can put in there for quicker permitting? If we want to put it to school, you know, can, are we, can we do some kind of wording to send to the planning board for um, Shortcut permitting, you know, like, like the stuff that that Marlboro did to a oh, forty-one D for, for, for the fidelity forty-one D, which is expedited permitting, state permitting. I mean that forty-three D, forty-three D, forty-three, forty. Not forty. You know I mean, is there something like that we can put in there <laughs> to in to uh, not, not not just to say okay, we're going to allow it, but to encourage it, so that some will say, oh, okay, this is hey, you know, if if I if I try and do it as a as a change of use to something, it's going to take a long time. But if I do a, a, a vocational school or something there, wow! It's the, the the town not only will encourage it; they'll they'll walk us through or something. It's there. John, the one thing that comes to mind is that um, schools require transportation, public transportation of some sort, and maybe there's some something that we could put into the bylaw that would allow us to support some form of um, transportation system because it's, uh, it is in a neighborhood that's not a, near a main road and that might be the, the way to approach it. 
here because I'm just uh, you know it, 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 it's if it was on 495 it'd be a lot easier to get to well, that's right. that's 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 you know, make a point. Is but is there something that you know? I, I, is there anything that we can do here at, here in zoning right now that might be able to encourage somebody to want to use that building for something that that would be the least impact on the area it's and still get as many people employed in that area and. Um, and won't just have a, a a building another empty building for a long period of time because that building right now is in perfect shape is there anything in the zoning bylaws currently that is that differentiates between occupying existing buildings versus um versus building new things i mean it's not per se, but I mean, site plan review, for example, isn't necessary unless you're doing something to the exterior of a building or adding on. So if you're occupying existing space and not mm -hmm. making any changes to the exterior that trigger a threshold, you don't need site plan review from the planning board. Okay. I mean, this is perfect for like secret service. <laughs> it's serious. It's so hidden in the in the in the woods there. I mean. But if it became an educational facility of some sort, it, it wouldn't need any permitting from the town unless right. they changed it, right? Right. Well, well anybody, anybody moving in would have to make some changes. You know, it's well, good. One, one, third, one third of it is, is, is all chemical, uh -huh. uh, chemical engineering and that kind of stuff. Then another section of it is, is set up for, uh, for construction and that kind of... You know, That's all this, interior, though, right? Uh, no, they should probably have to do some, some exterior stuff because, you know, there's, there's a racetrack in the back of it also and a skid pad. And, uh, you know, whoever does anything, they'll, they'll have to do... You know, okay, come on, I, I, I buy and flip houses. You, whatever you do, you have to do changes. Bathrooms and kitchens. Right, but that's inside. What we're getting at is that if it's, if it's zoning, you're, t you're really dealing with what's outside the four walls. And so the only thing you can really look at is what, you know, could you give more density well, to you the just site? Buses. I, I'm so talking about some do. public transportation yeah. system. I'm not sure if it's a bus or whatever right. it is. But the, the point is, is that that would be much better than having, you know, 250 new cars going to that location, right? Well, well no, the best thing is to, a, a, anything other than having an empty building for several years and is, is what we're try, trying to... So, uh, this may be a dumb question, but is the order of the things that we are listing by right, does it make it... Is, is there is there an impression that this would be given precedence over that one? Because if you, you are, we are putting educational locational facilities as the thirteenth item or something, so would I, I as a business holder think that no, they are they would rather have manufacturing first, then they'll come and look at me? Would that Do matter? You have any comments on that? I mean, I don't I don't think they would. It makes it's it more visible, but yeah. Hmm? But for me, it's the, it's it, you know, is there some if, is there is there anywhere that we can that, that <coughs> from uh, Zach that we could uh, we can ask the planning board to look into fast track sure. Scott permitting. So that was interesting. Can you oh, come sorry. up? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Scott Richardson. I'm here on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. It's interesting that you brought that up because that was actually the one topic that I was going to bring up as well, is uh, Chapter 43D, Expedited Permitting uh, through the state. Um, I did a little bit of reading briefly, uh, but just listing the area towns that actually have adopted expedited permitting, they include Ashland, Framingham, Franklin, Grafton, Hudson, Marlboro, Medway, Millis, Northbridge, Shrewsbury, Sutton, Uxbridge, and Westboro, basically towns in our area. Uh, the way it reads is that you, uh, if you adopt this, you actually have to f uh, identify priority development sites. It doesn't say, it, and it basically focuses on commercial or industrial property eligible under local zoning for development, redevelopment of at least 50,000 square feet, 
and designated as a priority development site by the state's interagency permitting board. So there's a little bit of process to go through to say, say let's let's identify South Street or this particular zone uh, on Franklin Street as a expedited permitting zone. And Elaine, well, you know much more about this probably than all of us. Um, you have to go through a process to get those approved, and then you have basically there's a model for streamlined local permitting. I don't believe. You, Correct me if I'm wrong, and if you know, I don't think you can identify that, hey, we are promoting this one use as a, an expedited approval process. Rather, it's the site. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's normally land, too. It's not an existing building that's in Correct. pretty good condition. It's yeah. like it's a big piece of land that the town has identified. Or it could be, again, a build, you know, it could be an existing building. And again, if you're using it for the same use, you don't have to go in front of planning board, so that saves time. But if you're, again, if you have a change of use, or again, you're tearing down a building and building a new building, mm -hmm. then... It's used for redevelopment. Redevelopment. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, I would encourage, you know, the town to consider that for, I think, for South Street, ideally, and maybe again for this particular zone that has this one building on it. And it's come up before. I guess the the issue was always where. <laughs> so that's deciding what. So no one before it never went to a point where people were going to identify an area that would be the beneficiary. Something to consider. Right. So I I actually looked at the Uxbridge land. It's a hundred acres, um, and it's the forty three D process um, it's 180 days from the time you start to the time you have your, all your permits which is significant if you're doing a big project and you've got multi uses and all kinds of things like that but we don't have a hundred acres lying around we, we don't even have like 20 acres on South Street that's free of anything yeah and so that's I, what I, part of the issue has been um, we've already had development over several years, so it's like trying to get something that big or that significant to go through this process mm -hmm. becomes a little bit more um, challenging because it's not that big. I think, again, if it's something that the town would consider and would implement, it just has is another potential attraction for a developer to say, oh, if I am considering to develop on South Street, I do want to buy this bu a building there and redevelop it, or some land and, mm -hmm. and or tear something down and rebuild something, I know that I do have expedited permitting opportunity. So I have a shortened window. So right. that's all. I, again, I, I'm, I'm thinking of this 43B is a, 43D as a process for large parcels, not for like the smaller things that we have on South Street. I, do yeah. any of the towns have them for like smaller parcels? Yeah, it looks like, yes, they've uh, identified in all of the towns, they've identified certain streets and or sites. Um, let's see. In Ashland, they have actually just identified two sites, 60 Pleasant Street and 61 Waverly Street. So they're very specific. Um, so. Uh, um, Are those 10 acres? Are they, do you have any sense of? 60 Pleasant Street, I think, is that, is the reuse of the old Sharon Bolton's Grove building, I think. But that, a new building was built there, so maybe that was adopted before. Framingham, it's just, uh, it's actually 990 Crossing, Kachitrit Road, Speen Street, it says Speen Road, uh, and Technology Park. So, so they did, they did do uh, 43D on D, those. Yes. Oh, and again, in Franklin, it's Forge Park and Franklin Industrial Park. So right, you could basically right. say... Those are big ones, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, a lot of them are just street addresses in certain towns that they'd like to dive in, they've identified as prime sites for redevelopment. So again, mm -hmm. something to consider for... Again, South Street, we still have empty buildings. We want to see some investment. I mean, we have a zone that is ideal for commercial, industrial, mixed-use development. Um, so again, to have that added attraction to mm -hmm. a developer to say, you, we now have expedited permitting. How much building is on South Street, commercial building? How what's many square feet? Yeah, what's the total square feet about? Just I think it's two million. Yeah, it's about 150,000 square feet right. that's vacant. I don't know, out of two million. 
Yeah. What's that? It's about 150,000 square feet that's vacant out of 2 million. No, we have 90,000 square feet and just it just No, it's 80. more than that. It's not considered available. Correct. So, but so. again, <laughs> we, know, we know that there's there's at least 360,000 square feet that are empty. Yeah, but not available. Right. So, right. Um, and there's two pieces of land that are for sale. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rest of it's not for sale. That's basically... Well, I thought in real estate, anything's for sale for the rest <laughs> uh, yeah, You would think, you would think, for you know? So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if, if I may through the chair, the, um, you know, if you're reading that, that list of towns, you know, it seems like every, every town around us has expedited permitting for specific um, areas. You know, and they're, so they're trying to encourage development or redevelopment. You know, do we want to be the the town that is looked at as being obstructionists to having to having development happen in their town? You know, it, it's you know, it, you know, I'm, I, you know. Uh, at at some point, you know, do we want to do we want to raise that? Um, that what eighty? What are we eighty-seven thirteen? Or we set? What are we seventeen percent or thirteen uh, percent? Seventeen percent. Seventeen percent commercial tax. Commercial, tax. commercial to residential. You know, do we want to do we want to raise that a couple percentage points, or are we going to be losing that losing a couple percentage points on that? And when the when the the residential base is is growing so much, you know, we just we just built another school. We've got the. New library, new DPW facility. We're spending a lot of money, and so it would be great to have more businesses come in to uh, help us pick up the load. And and if if there's any way of, of trying to get some expedited permitting for some specific sites, I really think we should we should try and look at it because if every town around us has it, we look like um, the only one that that doesn't. And and and, uh, and I feel you know, look at that. I feel like there's a certain amount of of um, that we might be late to the game, or we might think of things, and I, I'm not. I'm not saying this is, is any um, a criticism of people <laughs> who have been um, working on this in the past, but, but that we have not made changes that other towns um, competing for the same businesses have made um, as you know as soon as. <laughs> so so we might be behind the game on this, but we should we, you know we should discuss it more. For, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I agree. I was just thinking of like making one of the ideas to make it more lucrative is to have that expedited permit. But we get to, like as a town, we decide this year it's going to be educational and vocational facilities are going to get expedited permit. So you give a deadline as well. Mm -hmm. So if if a business wants to make use of that thing this year, this is our focus. So if this year you guys are coming in, we're going to give you expedited permission on certain sites or certain areas or something. And then if you decide that. We are not hearing too much fr from this business. We move on to a different line and <coughs> them. That's interesting. Yeah, I think again, it's more of a zone that is designated as your expedited permitting zone, mm -hmm. so that anything that is allowed by right or even by special permit is what you would. Again, if somebody comes in that wants to do a school, fine, yeah, yeah. fine. But it may be Does in more industrial. Does it have industrial. to be that way, or is that just the way it's generally? Uh, again, done? that's what I read yeah. so far. So again, obviously Elaine can do a little more research at the towns that have this and find out a little bit more. So, Mary, I yes. just have a, a clarification question for Scott. If that's yes, yes. you mentioned that you identify the areas in town and then you go through an approval process. Yes. Who is the approval process with? Is that with the state? It is. It's, it's the state's interagency permitting board, which I never heard of. Well, I, think this, I think this, by, this uh, law came about during the recession, and it was to uh, jumpstart, you know, the ability for businesses that were looking at Massachusetts as a whole to, you know, find different holes that they could fit in and go quickly, um, because the business of finding space. It, takes so long um, that the business uh, requirements change before they can actually open. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking of so being kind of behind. Katie, um, if you have a comment, do you want to come up real quick? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Scott. Thanks. Yeah, Kelly Square in Worcester, that's how they got the, uh, the uh, Red Sox to move there. 
I also have another unrelated question okay. after. And I, I have one go. too. So. Yes, go ahead. So I see that, that you have a, um, a use that is by special permit for um, genetic, biological, and chemical research centers, laboratories, manufacturing, um, with biosafety level three. So mm -hmm. you, by right, you have level one and two, but level three, you require the special permit. Is, is, that, um, is that something that's holding companies back from, from locating here? I mean, there's, there's five biosafety levels, right? I believe so. so yeah. Does anybody know if that's true? I think there's five. So with five being um, the most, you know, cause of concern. So why, why are we, um, I mean, has this been on the books for a long time? Is it worth reviewing? Two years ago, we three years ago we uh, we got that that through. I think they all used to be by special permit, and then um, the board of appeals basically said, "Look, we're issuing a lot of these just you know routinely, and so some of them should be by right and combined with the chamber's desire to spur some economic development." So it was the decision made that one and two could be by right, and then three and four, I think, by special permit. Uh, I, I think there's only one four in the whole state. Right. And it's, uh, it's at VU. Uh, I thought that was five. No, it's four. There are four. It's four? It's four. There are four. Oh, so okay. the decision was and made to allow some by right and some by special permit. In your experience, um, uh, has ZBA been getting requests for level three? None. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that they evidently that? not. Do you think that's because it's, it's um, requires the special permit or because it seems like there's a lot of attracting business. these types of laboratories springing up everywhere and um, but not met in Hoppington it seems like they're leaving right <laughs> so uh, you know that th there's a lot of point. Th there, I mean it's a very I, I saw where there was one company mentioned in the Board of Selectmen minutes that was in some kind of talks to come to Hopkinton. I don't know their specific products, but um, um, it seems like that, you know, there are certain factors that are preventing companies from coming here in this industry. So that, maybe not for this year, but seems like something that, that we should, um, that seems like an area where, where there's at least demand. <laughs> So I'm going to just jot down that if there's other ways to encourage um, uh, biotech companies. Uh, and one of our many work plan items that we can discuss. <laughs> yeah, I just read that Lake Pharma opened a Hopkinton facility um, here yeah. in 35 South Street. Yeah. I don't know how large that, that space is. It's all a striker's building? So that's very, great. so that's a, you know, that's great. feather in our cap. Yeah, absolutely. Carol, you had something from before. Well, I, yeah, I just had a question as to why, I probably missed the discussion, so maybe you can just give me a quick answer. Why we're, we're so gung-ho to encourage educational facilities as opposed to biomedical facilities or any other facility? Why, um, I, I was getting the impression that it was particularly in relation to our professional office space on Franklin, that there was something. You know, but, <laughs> but there's no advantage to it being educational, just that we'd like something to go in there, correct? Yes. And we didn't specifically mention educational facilities, and there was no reason not to mention it in our bylaws. And if that <coughs> were to encourage someone to maybe take a look at it. I don't know that putting it in our bylaws does, you know, make somebody say, oh, wait, wait, let me not think about it. But <laughs> possibly. But. And I have one other question with regards to educational facilities. Do they not pay substantially less in taxes? Would it not behoove if the town to have it? So maybe we don't necessarily want to. Well, there's, there's more than taxes. It, it's, it's employment in the area is also an important thing. If, you know, it, um, the uh, the company we're, we're losing had um, uh, at, at that peak. I think they had about 110 employees. Um, you know, if if a, if a facility can come in, 
you know, the, the building is set up for education as it stands now. And, and my, my whole thing is that we have to set up as a professional office park, but uh, we're kidding ourselves to think that it actually can be used as a professional office park. It just, it just isn't. It, you know, we we're, were talking about South Street and how South Street, it was its own industrial, but it really is it's a mixed commercial use. Mm -hmm. And, but we don't, we, we don't want to come out and say that it's mixed commercial use because some people might panic. But this, calling that office, calling that professional office, it's, it, that's, also, uh, that's, that's also a misnomer. It, it really can't be. Um, the, it doesn't have the infrastructure to, to have uh, companies to go up there. And, and any company that builds something up there, imagine the, getting that through the permitting, um, you know, even though it's, a, it's, it's allowed by right. So, so my my saying we should try to encourage um, a, an educational facility to, to go in there, it, even though it is set up for such, but to to, to at least maybe try and market it or something you know, <laughs> through zoning. Um, again, it's just uh, uh, you know even if we don't get as many as, as the, the the level of taxes we want, we'll encourage uh, getting some workers in there and, and just having the building not uh, deteriorate. Um, Ron, you had something. It was just. The, that particular professional office space is not really near a lot of amenities that a professional or an office park would would want to locate. Well, I, I I understand why why it might be attractive as an educational facility, right. but I'm I'm not I guess understanding why as a town we are aiming our sales pitch that way when that is not necessarily in the best interest of the town. You know, why do we want to highlight it as this would this is the place to put this, as opposed to just like to Scott's idea of, of making an expedited permitting? We're saying it would make a great school, but to somebody else, okay. it might make a great something else that mm -hmm. you know we're not even looking at, and we're we're pushing for a school that yes, it's nice to have people employed, but people employed does not help the financial position of the town. Oh, no, it does. Tax no, no, base. 100 employees equals a, a million dollars a year to a town, approximately. In what? In, 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 Retail in, sales? In money, money coming through. Money that people spend. They get gas. They buy food. They, 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 they do others. They buy, they buy homes and everything else. It's, it's, uh, it, uh, it, it's significant. But you're right. It, mm -hmm. to, to, to try and do something like a um, uh, expedited permitting for that area, you're right. That, that, that that does open up the open up the net much more. Right. I want to have plenty of time to discuss our work plan, and um, and that you know and and that will include this discussing definitions for zoning districts if we wanted to try to add those. Um, so so I just wanted to go through with everyone um, the topics that are on our plate still. And, um, and determine what order we want to do these things in. Okay, so um, the item that Mr. Garavadian proposed, I will um, give this to um, to Elaine, and you know she can scan it and copy it to everybody. But uh, but essentially, it's it's just a, a small paragraph saying. Um, they're requesting a change in the zoning bylaws regarding rubbish disposal. Um, and I think that they, we would have to do some research on the other bylaws involved in that, see whether or not that, um, that made sense and, and um, before, before being able to <coughs> delve into a discussion on that. So, um, okay, but I'm going to add that. What is that? Okay, it's okay for me. Okay. So, work plan. Oh, I need to get my glasses. This is tiny. <laughs> oh, he is. Work plan. Okay. Dark sky, lighting, standards, and rugs. Lots of things to research and read on this. <laughs> and it's a relatively complicated item. Um, my proposal is that we um, not discuss this prior to February because we would not get through it, I don't think, in a matter of, you know, half a meeting, okay? That's some of the mistakes that we made in the past, is that we, 
we try to rush stuff through at the end like something like this mm -hmm. and um, and then it, it, it didn't do well in town meeting because it, it looked like we rushed it right and it's gonna have to be pretty intensely detailed um, okay hours of business operation again I think we probably need a lot of input on this um, and to look at um, the current bylaws um, and really whether or not it belongs in zoning or general bylaws so um, also I would suggest delaying to February or later um, I am still expecting wording suggestion for on the stone walls the sidewalk construction and the signage Oh wait, I'm sorry. Can we kick that to I'm planning sorry. board? Yes, we did kick those three to planning board. Yes, those are planning board. So I'm leaving them on here you for get, now. You get to have another bite of the apple. Yeah, it's not gonna signage. That's the one I'm expecting some wording from from whoever suggested it. Um, so that we're gonna have to put on the um, on the back burner until we get that wording suggestion. Consolidate accessory family dwelling unit definition, et cetera, and or revise. So there's two items listed. Um, and this is, <laughs> it's clearly not an easy one to get past um, town meeting uh, <laughs> because, because uh, there's so many different ways to look at it different opinions on this so again I suggest we're not going to be we did have a number of items on last year's town meeting I don't think we're going to be able to get through a good solid discussion on this before the end of January okay so I think we you know it, it, from, from doing this a while I think that we we've Got a good bunch that that has been sent up to uh, the planning board for the possibility of getting to town meeting. This is it's been a it's really been very productive. Yeah, I think we've got a few there. I don't know that they'll all get through. Mm -hmm. Okay, trash cans. Well, we decided that was a general bylaw. All right, but we're going to still look at the wording because nobody's looking at it. So we will look at the wording. We'll see if we can fit that in um, before the end of the month but increase retail okay this this one that we started discussing is retail store square foot maximum in the industrial a and b districts um, I think there was there was some initial discussion about how the you know increasing to 5,000 and what does it matter because that's really still pretty small um, <coughs> but do people feel like we would um, we have enough background information and um, and we would be able to discuss this and conclude the discussion before the end of the month or should we delay it to February when we can delve into it more deeply didn't we do that one already no we, we discussed it but we didn't conclude it for some reason, I remember having to heard about it, but I yeah. don't know what the we did. Decision we did, we did, yes, okay. and we just we tabled it, okay, um, because we just couldn't come to a conclusion about what precisely to do. So, so okay. yeah, yeah, increase maximum. to increase was the part that we didn't because it says like right here accessory. Yeah, we did twelve ten six zero. We did twelve ten, retail. but we so, didn't vote on anything. The minutes say that that the proposal was tabled until Scott Richardson can be present to describe the purpose. Jump in, run again. Yeah, you tell. What the heck? Okay, I knew that. Excellent. I knew that we had tabled it, but I didn't fast enough. Great timing. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe, did maybe it's poor timing. Maybe, <laughs> no, maybe poor timing. Good. Okay. Oh, fun. And then um, there's allowing theaters, halls, and clubs by right, which I think is super controversial. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Scott. I'm a very fast runner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Scott, you thought you could get home. Yes. But no. Okay, so. 
at our meeting on December 10th, we discussed this increased retail store square footage from 2,000 to 5,000 square feet. And we had it, you know, we went back and forth a little bit. Some people felt that it, 5,000 wouldn't make all that much difference because that's still fairly small. And, um, and so we tabled it to the point where, uh, because, you know, we thought you might have more input. <laughs> do I you really have do. more okay. input? <laughs> <laughs> this is as an ancillary use to manufacturing. This is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Right, just in general. retail in general. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I would defer to oh. Rita, <laughs> actually, <laughs> on what her, you know, uh, experience is in, you know, ser various size retail stores that come under that 5,000 square foot. Um, you know, whether that is practical or not. I mean, retail spaces come in all shapes and sizes now. Um, we just, I just thought that, you know, our thinking in the chamber was that 2,000 just seemed a little small. Restrictive, right? Yeah. I mean, certainly if you want to make it larger, that's fine. So big box stores are in the tens of thousands of... 40. So yeah. Price Chopper is 40,000 square feet. Okay. How, is, how big is TJ Farms or the little convenience store right here at the corner? Oh. Where Cumberland Farms used to be. How big is that? That's probably 1,500 square feet. Or less. Yeah. Hmm. Waterfresh Farms? What's that? I know they're not there That anymore, was like 10,000. That was... Was that before? Big, well, the first floor was about 7,000 square feet. Okay. It was about 7. Yeah. 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 The first floor, which is like where the, the retail portion was. Retail, now, and then the brewery was about 7,000 square feet. Okay. Not counting the greenhouses behind. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Is, is this proposal 5,000 feet of floor space or total storage, everything? It's everything that's it's everything. Right. I don't know how to run a store anymore right. when I do a car wash, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess the, I, know, I was getting this confused as the it's accessory thing, but um, the thing about this, if you're having a 2,000 square foot tenant or a 5,000 square foot tenant, these are still small tenants. There's no anchor tenant. So will they go there without an anchor tenant? Probably not. Yeah, because again, a restaurant isn't allowed to use in that, you know, a 5,000 square foot restaurant is actually a pretty big restaurant. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't affect, you know, this doesn't affect that. Um, yeah. What's the minimum size for an acre? For an acre or an acre? For, an, for an, an anchor. For an anchor. Um, it, again, I, I'll go back to Price Chopper's 40,000 square feet. That is a small grocery store by today's standards. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to do a grocery store, an industrial bay, there's going to be other things that we're going to want to look at because it's... But by definition, this is just supposed to be a store to provide for the convenience of right. the immediate neighborhood, selling such items as groceries. Take up. It's not... My reading of this is it's a convenience store. It's not price chopper. Correct. Yeah, it's, you know, is it a dry cleaner? Is it a whatever else you see in, you know, a retail strip, retail center. Um, but again, yeah. unless you have some kind of an anchor, yes, it's not, they're not going to go there. Restaurant a restaurant could be an anchor. anchor then, true. So. Maybe, the, maybe the car wash is an anchor. I don't know. But an anchor is defined as not just square footage, but something that drives traffic to that location. So that's, I didn't know if you had something specific up your no. sleeve on this one. No. <laughs> okay. I guess turning to Elaine, has there been any, any retailers that have, have, have come looking for 2,001 square feet? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just trying to, again, have more options, you know, to attract additional amenities is what it amounts to. Sorry. Thank you. Would it help to boost it to, to, to say, 10? You know what I mean? Then I think you get back into the same argument about, you know, what, what the zone is designed for. Yeah. We might have to revisit that. 
after we mm -hmm. have more of a discussion of yeah. the zone. Mm -hmm. Zones. Be, before say. Scott leaves, yes. can we ask him to address the theaters, halls, and clubs by right? Mm, yes. Which was another issue that. That would be great. Had. Well, uh, again, obviously, a lot of the you know the entities, you know, bills and others are getting you know permit, you know, special permits for entertainment uh, within their facility fairly easily, I guess, at this point. Um, however, again, if there was an opportunity to have it by right. Just be an option, an additional option for again additional amenities downtown. So it just seems like it was interesting that you know in a downtown you would normally have those things historically for the past couple hundred years. Why not have them by right? So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming back. Thanks. <laughs> well, now you can go home. <laughs> Okay, so um, allowing theaters, halls, and clubs by right, we, I think, again, you know, we need to discuss the definitions. This, that was for the business and, um, what's BD, business? Downtown, downtown business. business. Down, and downtown business districts. Okay, so the business district being mm. the 495 strip close to 495. 90. It's actually just a couple of small locations it's where the next generation is yeah. and, and where Co um, and Dunkin' Donuts is on South Street. Okay. And, and, and then there's the uh, downtown. Price chopper. Okay. Yeah. So, so really, yeah, what I would... Already built. What I think of being the retail districts, yeah. Okay. Okay. So a lot of times in other towns, the reason why this these are special permit uses mm -hmm. is because um, a club or a theater is going to generate a lot of traffic to it mm -hmm. um, and so many of the other towns have it as a special permit use because then they can kind of gauge you know how all these people are going to go there I mean they're going to guess on how many parking spaces they need but from a practical standpoint, you need to figure out the next step, which is what's really going to happen in the four walls. <laughs> so with when you get a very specific operator there, then you have a better handle on how to oh, yeah. gauge what they're doing. Yeah, that makes you know? sense. But isn't that done in site plan review anyway, to make sure? Because no, haven't, we, haven't we made uh, developers change uh, signal lights, change the ad, ad turning lanes and um, hammerheads and, and everything else when, they, when they're building, you know, it, you know, should we, should we, in that case, because I've been parking's been brought up a lot, should we look at more of our parking requirements for each of these areas, for each of the different uh, um, buildings, because we did it, we redid it with, uh, with restaurants because we got burned there, you know, should we be looking at for, for other stuff, because you know, if that's one of the things that's holding us back from from allowing some of these things by right, then let's get very specific about the parking and the traffic. I don't think you can, though, based on not knowing who the operator is. That's why. That's why because this, is, think, no, that's why this is normally a special permit in every other town. Okay. The entertainment that Bills is going to bring in would be considerably different than the entertainment that the next owner might bring in. It's like it's operator specific. Well, I know on the board of selectmen, we we um, finally said that uh, people don't need um, entertainment licenses if they have a, a TV or music <laughs> playing. They used to have to get a license and, and say how many televisions they really? had. Really, that's interesting. Um, so, but we figured <laughs> televisions are okay. Yes, so. It just had to be an extra paperwork. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, some of the things we looked at um, when, when some of these um, applicants came for entertainment licenses are, um, I don't remember looking at parking issues, but um, in the neighborhood where it was, some, some of these places about residential neighborhoods, um, how many patrons are we going to be having in, hours. So the, and, and it's, sometimes it can be site specific. So I, I I prefer to keep that as a special permit. That's just me, but um, rather make it a, a right. So the special permit now, they're not just they're not just a prohibited. That's oh okay. 
I thought we were having prohibited that. So well, no, 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 just no. special permit. Okay. No, but you know, it, it's important because we don't. I didn't know axe throwing was going to exist. You know, five years ago, and and it should have some kind of a collar around the way that uh, it's you know being offered. Right, but I don't. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I know, but I that, know that, it that, didn't that, have a bar to begin with. So be, the, this the, is a, this is a very important part of what I'm talking about. That, is that, that should be part of zoning is to say you know to be putting rules around if people are going to have. Well, that's actual. indoor recreation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I understand, but but now we're getting into you know telling people you know are you gonna, is it going to be safe axe throwing? You know they they have it in pins right now and they they just added it. Um, because it's 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 something that's that's big, you know. It's like the Macarena was a few years ago, you know. It's something things things come and go, um, you know. The, uh, roller skating was you know, thirty years ago, you don't have any of those anymore. Okay, then the last two things that are still on our list oh, fuck on axe throwing. <laughs> are increased minimum lot area in residential districts and permanently per, or in and or permanently protect large tracts of private open space. So, um, and again, I don't think that those are quick discussions. Um, however, I, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to go through the list of things that we've added to the work plan. So, review parking requirements um, by law. That's, that's one. Oh, that's um, what you said. Where are we on this? The solar farms. That she's added. Solar farm overlay districts was suggested. Um, Where's that on my? It's, it's not. The, these are the new ones. Oh, I'm saying. I mean, no, I just I'm going to see this. It came up tonight. Oh, I first went through the list of existing ones. <laughs> Thank okay. you. I'm, I'm going to use some of your lines here. Okay. Um, the expedited permitting process. Possibility. Uh, let's see. Um, a ways to, other ways to encourage biotech companies and definitions for zoning districts. So, my opinion is that our next meeting we need to use to, or actually, in the next half an hour we use to discuss this definitions for do zoning districts. And even, even if we don't come up with wording changes that go into the zoning bylaws, I think it will help us all align on our concepts behind the zoning districts. Or at least define where we differ. <laughs> mm -hmm. All of which will be useful in our discussions. Okay. Were there any other? Okay, and then I'm sorry. One, the one other added one was the one from Mr. Garabadian about the garden apartments and. Okay, it has to do with two ten seventy four B and two ten seventy five three B. Okay. So can you pass this down to Elaine? Um, and so we can discuss that. I, I think that one we could do it at our next meeting, but we're, we need to actually have some things in front of us to read beforehand. OK. Um, so, yes. I gave you a list of uh, zone definitions that were being used by the town of Franklin. Do you think maybe we could circulate that for next meeting? Yeah, then? that would be great. Um, and then use that as sort of a, a, a basis for, for the discussion of the different zones? Because I think they did a pretty decent job of it. Okay. Maybe we want to tweak it or something like that. But I don't have it with me because I gave you my copy. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah, it, that would be great. Um, Elaine, did you get a copy of that when I, she forwarded it electronically? I didn't, okay. but I found it online. I think oh, okay, good. there's no yeah, yeah, that's it's the same section. Yeah. I, I didn't see that. that probably would be more productive than doing it without the, that in front of us. Um, so at the next meeting, in addition to the, what I just mentioned about the 
rubbish collection. Um, let's conclude a discussion about the retail store maximum size um, article and conclude a discussion about uh, theaters and clubs and halls by right. And do you want to discuss trash cans at the next meeting? Sure. Screening of trash cans and bringing them off the street. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to, if, if I may, I, I, I just sent everybody um, a, uh, this study that was done by Northeastern University on the town two years ago. I forwarded it to, to, to everybody's email. To, to for everybody to take a look at, um, because you know that that's where they they mention um, some of the stuff that Scott was just bringing up um, about the um, the permitting and and all of that. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, once you have this updated, could you send me a word version of it? Sure. Thanks. I think it's in Word. No? It's not Excel. It's, yeah. And um, does anyone have a uh, strong preference for any other item on our open list that they would really like to see finalized in some way before town meeting this year? Um, Mike Shepard's uh, recommendation on mobile vendor. Yes. Is that something we could knock off? We we um, discussed net <coughs> last time sending that up to Anymore? Selectman. Selectman. Okay. Yeah. Selectman. All right. Yeah. And so we. Um, All right. So that one was done. Mm. Yeah, it's done because it's really not the zoning. Right. Yeah. We, what we did. I th thought you were here, but I, um, I thought I was. I here apologize. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we discussed. Um, recommending that the selectmen actually form a, a short-term task force on it okay. because it was I wasn't sure was if we were recommending discuss. the selectmen didn't have the task force or we were going to have the task force. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, that, that's what we'd recommend. Okay. But All right. They might kick it back. You never know. <laughs> Anyone else have any burning topic that they would want before the end of the month with the hopes of getting it on this year's town meeting? Okay, good. So then, um, could you repeat back to what, what I said? What I said we'd do next time, next at the next meeting, because the next meeting, these are the items that uh, these are the only ones that'll have hope of getting on this year's town meeting. They're not guaranteed to, but yes. <laughs> uh, town trash pickup for condominiums um, increase the maximum retail size in the industrial and industrial B theaters, halls, and clubs by right. Um, trash can screening and bringing them off the street and include the Northeastern study for the town with the materials. Okay, good. And then definitions of the zoning districts. Okay. Oh, Franklin also? Yeah. Looks. Yeah, that we're, we're going to use that. We have the same. I, I thought I sent you did, it. You did send, send it to you. But it was, a, it was like a Google. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't come through as an actual oh, as a document. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna go look for it. But I think I found it in their bylaw. Yes, yeah, it, it starts out by saying intention of the district. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so those are the agenda items for next time. All right. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? True. I'm sitting an hour waiting for a little small something, which I think John will appreciate because in the past he liked these things. Um, but I was waiting for the spot, and I, I think this is a good one. I wonder if I think we need to change one word in the uh, car wash thing. And I looked up three different grammar things because I knew there was a difference between the word utilize and use. And I think we have utilized right now in whatever you said out loud. Um, so here's your grammar lesson, John, who always liked these in the past. 
Uh, the best ex explanation I found is at EliteEditing.com. Utilize is used when you're using something for a purpose other than it was supposed to be used for. Huh. So their example is, I use my frying pan to cook with, but I have utilized it as a weapon. Yep. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's a good lesson right there. So, yeah. I think we have utilized, He's which actually, and it's not just a, a, a grammar nerd thing, I worry even that there could be a little loophole there that we've got something else we've set up that we're utilizing as water retention because it allows creative use of stuff. So I think it's said utilize, and I propose, if no one's against it, that we change utilize to use in that, uh, uh, what is it, car wash thing. That's awesome. Agreed? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Amen. Good for me. Okay. Any changes to the minutes? Could I ask for a clarification? Yes, please. Uh, please. Number two in the second paragraph, um, there's some statements there that the town didn't allow big back retailers in the industrial district because they wanted to preserve the area for industrial manufacturing and high paying jobs. That, that's exactly what was said. When, I, when it gets into the meetings, does that, is, is there some history that says the town voted at town meeting to restrict big box retailers for the purpose of high paying industrial jobs? Like my, my question yeah. is, I understand that's what was said, but is that what we want in our meetings? And if that's what has been voted on, and that's what has, has been said, but I haven't found anywhere in any of my documentation that said the industrial district is for this purpose, which is kind of why we're having this discussion on definitions. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. So the, the minutes reflect the discussion at the meeting. Right. But does it say, I mean, I noticed on, um, I don't know. Page one, you know, halfway through the, the last paragraph, it says, um, Carol stated that she believed the purpose of the pr previous proposal. Um, so d perhaps we can add wording like that to the section you're talking about? It, yeah. It, well, actually, I was paraphrasing what Elaine had said the meeting before that, mm -hmm. which was why big box retail was not allowed in the industrial zone. Mm -hmm. Because it was that land was being preserved for higher paying, high tech type businesses. And that whole area was right. formed for industrial purposes right. back. But then that if I may through the chair, that brings me back to my Things point change. about the about the professional um, office park. We're holding out for a professional office park, but we know that there's not gonna be a professional office building built off Franklin Road. So sometimes, you know, in 1950, when we designated the South Street, to put these designations on some of these areas, that, you know, we're not thinking 60 and 70 years ahead. I don't, I don't know that that's the point. <laughs> and do we remember? I think, yeah. I think the only point that was being made was when it was originally designed, that's what the district was designed for. That's that's what the statement was. That's yeah. what I recall the statement being. Whether or not it it's actual fact or whether or not that's a good theory going forward, that was the statement that was made. And that's what the minute, minutes are Reflecting. supposed to reflect, is what was said in the meeting. Thank so, you. <laughs> Ms. McNamara noted that the town didn't allow, okay, because they want to preserve. So do you, do you feel like the, this reflects the discussion? Yeah, I don't think that it can be interpreted as anything other than, you know, the individual people saying it. Um, but do you, do you have a specific 
proposal for a change? I, I can't change what was said. I just yeah. when, when it goes, gets into official town meetings and we vote to approve it, yeah. we've, we've got this board it's reporting funny. that this is what the town said. It's not a report of the board. It's a discussion. It reflects the discussion that the board had and things okay. that people talked about. So we're not going so to it's be not held an official to, we're not held to this statement. No. As a board. No. Okay. Okay. Any other changes? Just the one in uh, section two, the final paragraph, because I don't want to be held to that standard either. Where it refers to <laughs> Mr. Foisy as Ms. Ms. Foisy. <laughs> where is that? Uh, page three, the second paragraph that starts with Gary Lindo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other changes? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve with amendments. With amendments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, um, our next meeting is in two weeks, no, in two weeks and a day. The 22nd? Right? On the 22nd at 7 p.m. And then our subsequent meeting will be on February 4th. Monday, February 4th at 7 p.m. And it's not interfering with any other meetings, right? Okay. Monday, February 4th. Okay. I'm just pulling mine up. Let's say 22nd. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Because I don't know if we do every other week or if it's like second and fourth Monday. Because otherwise it. So we did the 22nd? Oh, I like that. 22nd is Tuesday the 22nd we had to do because um, of Martin Luther King Day. And then this, the subsequent one is February 4th. Okay, yep, everyone? All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So this Great. Cool. We are adjourned.